then he like switched off to the scene. He's like, all right, I cleaned it on up. But you know, this is not their first time. Oh, I remember before. that. Yeah. Oh man. Now here's a question. Is there a universe where he plays Steve against Sonic specifically? Because I feel like that's uh, a, a brand of misery that I don't even know who's more miserable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I the, the most I realize the most person upset in the Sonic Steve matchup is the audience. But <laughs> maybe there's maybe one of the characters has a good matchup. I know we'll see. I know he loves certainly playing this game and Cranio having a really good time over here getting the up there to the back air conversion right now. And T Extreme just trying to just get close this gap between him and Sonic. And now this is the very annoying thing about Sonic. He gets these percent leads and then he runs away and like just kind of tries to keep that lead. It's your job to keep yourself in kind of reactable range through that spin attack that's just constantly incoming. I mean, I do think that Pikachu, as far as characters that can close the distance and make it work, Pikachu's definitely one of the better ones. Uh, you know, he does have things like quick attack. And also, just his combos themselves are very damaging. So a single neutral win can net a lot of percent that can, you know, maybe take away that lead. Yeah, and Crane just trying to go off for the call F smash to punish any approaches. And this is the thing where G I'm starting to see that GX3 might have to watch out for these T-Jones. I l like how he is throwing them out preemptively to cover these spin dash approaches, but if Crane just kind of reads it and jumps it and punishes it on reaction, it's kind of lights out for you, GX3. Oh, that was a great read right there. Forward smash was big, but without the sweet spot, not really going to kill. F tilt. I don't know why Sonic F tilt kills. I know, but he definitely got the boots with the fur on right now. And he's looking to trap this ledge trap here. But G Extreme punishing that there with a good old F smash. Oh, not quite taking the stock, but. And a oh, tick! What? You're still. Oh, I guess you have Sonic oh. Air Dodge. But back throw definitely will steal it here. Yeah, I think G Extreme thought he had it right there. Landed that super low back air, but great reactions from uh, from Greninja keeps him alive. And now this is where the misery truly yeah, begins. Sonic with a lead. Sonic with a percent lead already. Pretty dang crummy. Sonic with a stock lead. There comes a okay. Good job cleaning up well, there right you there. Go. You only got 6% on yourself, you're fine, yeah. you're chilling. Speaking of moves that I don't understand why they kill, can't you dash attack? I don't know. He listen, headbutt? I don't know. I, I mean Okay. Sure. But Pikachu has a character in terms of design. I don't know why he has like a dash attack and a kill throw. Like that's I, I don't usually know. Usually characters don't have those two things unless they're bad. Listen, Sakurai, he just wanted Pikachu to be his love child this game. Always kind of bluffing it and kind of dissing Pikachu. Yeah. Like, like, hearkening back. He's like, this is the last game I'm going to work on in Smash. I want to, to have a cute little reference to Smash 64 and have Pikachu be the broken top tier. Yeah, and right now, you know, we're seeing none of those kind of up um, combo throws, none of those kill throws kind of come out to play against Greninja here as, uh, you know, He's trying to trap G Extreme at the ledge here with the S-Mash, the all-powerful fist that sends you to Whoa. other dimensions. Yeah, I will say, you know, during the talk uh, we just had about how Pikachu is broken, kind of demonstrating it, G Extreme took the lead. Not only that, it's a sizable lead. At any moment, their dash attack will kill. Up throw might do it. f tilt closer to the ledge might also kill. There's... Oh, oh. there you go. Stalling him out to just drop him on down. Now, Kryn, this is where uh, Sa Ooh. Sa Sa Ooh. Oh my god! Oh, I thought we were going to see some like suicide He's death. Going. Well, no. okay. Um, well, then, okay, at least you got your suicide death. <laughs> yeah. He tried I mean, going for some crazy reversal, but. Yeah. Good lord. Oh, you're going to get massively punished for that. Oh, so much damage. And, if the, like, getting hit by Sonic just hurts so much more than other characters because you know that that percentage means that now you have to approach. You're like, oh my god, a 30% combo. Oh. Yeah, not forget about that S-Smash as well. In that back air. That back air is strong for zero reason. I mean, I feel like Sonic back air kill, being like a kill move kind of makes sense. It's pretty fast, but it's a back air. A lot of characters yeah. have back airs being their kill move. And it looks like it. I don't know, at least has some weight to it. Yeah, it's a good, solid, meaty hit. And G Extreme punishing that dash <laughs> attack. Okay, hit him with the double S smash. All right. Another one. And we have G Extreme trying to trap Print on this platform here. There you go. 
is a headbutt, just punishing that drop down. And another one for you here. That dash attack almost killed you. That 116. Yeah, and GXG just trying to call out this approach to take this stock from Kren before he does any more damage. He's, he is. All right, actually, there it is. Yeah. I was going to say that Kreninja was not respecting the low end lag on F Smash. By the end there, F Smash was a baiting tool. You saw that. He would throw out the F Smash. Well, first of all, he was throwing out F Smash to just deal with the spin dash. And then he would throw out F Smash. Kreninja would try to punish him. He would shield, F tilt. Or he would yeah. just, like, bait back and go for a dash attack. You know, like, Kreninja does need to be careful what is and is not actually an opening for him with Pikachu's moveset. <clears throat> oh, Pikachu always be fooling everybody out here with those kind of lagless aerials. You can do a lots of options to kind of... And the aerials he has that do yes. have lag uh, sort of shift him out of this dimension. Yeah, he's in the pancake dimension, you know? <laughs> yeah, the pancake dimension. He's it's just, like, smushed to the bottom the of, like, the stage, and he's like, I'm just going to not exist and not play this game anymore. <laughs> you got to deal with whatever you comes next. You can't hit me. If I have no, like, it, he doesn't go into the Z-axis, he loses his Z-axis. Like, he, he becomes, becomes like a, a single image. line. Yeah. He All takes right. it from being a 2D well, fighter to a 1D fighter. I will All see right. you back after redemption. Maybe. All right, well, I will, so like, this is probably my last set uh, for a little while, and then I'm going to have to take a break. Guys, make sure you take care of your voices if you're a commentator out there. Uh, drink water, proper posture, and do not stress yourself too much. Um, moving into game two, though. So, Kreninja, <laughs> that was actually a little bit of back and forth. Even at those higher percents, it felt like either one of them could die first. And then on top of that, the damage thresholds were pretty neck and neck by the end. So... This time around, though, it seems like the combo is just there in a way that they weren't for G-Extreme earlier. And also, he's going for these edge guards on stage. Deep. All right, good dash attack. And the forward air. Hold on a second. Is this actually going to close out the deal, though? That's happened to him a few times where he accidentally buffers an option after getting hit by the T-Jolt. All right, Ninja, though, at this point, damage is really key. If you can land even, like, one single spin dash into a lot of percent, look at that, 78, no longer is there a huge gap between them. This is only, oh, my God, if that forward air had landed. I don't know, that might have killed. Sonic forward air scales really well with Rage. What? I mean, he's alive, but... <laughs> that was close. Good parry on that. And the dash attack of his own doesn't quite kill the same way that Pikachu's does, but 137%. He's looking for F tilt, and there he finds it. Wow, I think he even was rolling behind him, but doesn't matter. Invincibility ran down, and he got scooped. But, seeing it being scooped, scoop him up and out. That up smash, evening the game up instantly. Really pivotal for G Extreme because of how we already see Sonic with a lead is just a. It's a nightmare to deal with, and he wants to cut that nightmare. The alarm goes off, and he's he's putting a stop to it. All right, patience with the extreme right now, though. Lots of T-Jolts. Now, Sonic, on top of his spin dash, he also has great speed. So if Greninja plays his cards right, he can possibly find an opening if those uh, T-Jolts become just a little bit too predictable. But in the meantime, no jump, but a homing attack actually dodging the... Ooh, okay, we're just trading back and forth right now. Oh, Greninja thought he was going to land on the platform, did not expect his opponent to mess up like that. All of these hits start connecting, but nothing is actually turning into big damage. 90% on screen. There are definitely things that Pikachu can land that will kill, but not many of them. He needs to rack up even more percent. In the meantime, is just playing very carefully and shielding the thunder that time. Oh, the, the down air. If that had been the uh, actual spike hitbox, that would have been death, but instead now we have both of them deep in the red once more. Down throw, gonna try and go for some kind of read. He finds it! Wow, I... He must... I think he DI'd out, but he just was not expecting Pikachu to go up there and meet him. 
And as good as Sonic is with a lead, he also kind of struggles himself when he's the one who has to make a stock comeback. Let's see if it's going to be the case. We're seeing a lot of forward smashes coming out. Forward smash being a great, if it lands, it's fantastic. And it's very low lag, but G Extreme has not really fallen for it yet. All right, the damage keeps going up and up and up. I am not sure what that back air was. I guess he was expecting DI behind, or maybe that was just a technical flop, but it doesn't matter. G Extreme continues to get these <clears throat> tiny pokes and punishes. Even if it's just a singular back air or forward tilt, that means that the damage is getting racked up. Back throw at the ledge right there, it will kill 67%. And this is, we're probably not going to see a timeout, but it is worth building the clock. Because, if, especially if the match gets really slowed down and they have to struggle killing each other, the time will become a factor, even if the timer doesn't reach zero. Yeah, like, look at this, G-Extreme is, oh, I was about to say, you were perfectly fine just camping out, but I guess instead he's like, eh, that's boring. Run in for a back air. All right, I'm liking the way that G-Extreme going for full hops and making sure he double jumps kind of as, like, a little bit of a bait, but if Critter just catching on to that, he might be able to start getting, oh, my God. Good reads on uh, catching Pikachu's landings. Even though Pikachu is one of the hardest characters to actually punish their landings. I, that was strange. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. Greninja taking 134 now. And a minute 38. This is the thing. Even if Greninja starts to get work done here, it might not be enough, because the time is a factor. He needs to be making not only good damage, he needs to find a way to turn that into a kill ASAP. And if he gets hungry for it, that's the sort of thing that can get punished really effectively. Okay, 87%. Going for a deep edge guard of some kind. Doesn't actually find it, but still managing to keep stage presence. But that quick attack is so good at reversing. 100% though. Up smash will kill if he lands it. He does not find it though. Pikachu at 100%. Back here at the ledge. Forward smash, up smash. There are definitely moves from Sonic that will kill, but we have less than a minute on the clock. We're rolling around at the speed of sound. He's not going to actually find anything, though. This is so scary for both players. But G Extreme has the option to play extremely passively. He has the lead, only 40 seconds on the clock. If he wants to, he can do that, but instead goes for a trump into a back air for the kill. That's gonna be a game on the board for him as we move into a game three. That was honestly, I am loving the games between these two right now. All right, yeah. I'm not sure what they're telling each other, but they probably have a lot to say. But let their fists do the talking. All right. I signed on for one more set. I think you guys can tell that my voice might need a break. I, I'll try and stick with it for this last game here, but if I am feeling it a little bit too much in my vocal cords, I'm still intending to commentate uh, like around finals time, so. Don't want to push yourself too hard. This is something that, maybe it's just that I'm getting old. I'm an old man now. All you young s s spry commentators with your vocal cords that haven't been roughed up by years of screaming. All right, all right. Game three. Uh, yeah, just run up and back there. That's something that G-Extreme has been doing a lot. I mean, he hasn't really been getting punished for it until that exact moment. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's, Krinich is a good player. There are only so many times you can show an option before people find the answer again. Yeah, no, run up back there. I don't know. This was happening earlier on in the set, but Krinich wasn't punishing it. Not nearly in the same way. Look at this right now. Only 2% has been dealt off. And meanwhile, G Extreme at 107. Oh, okay, but the back air, I like that adaptation because instead of going for the rising back air and trying to get the auto cancel, he lands it and gets the landing hitbox. 
crazy that a single move has that much versatility to it. Forward tilt not killing. With a little more rage, if Greninja had taken more damage, I might have, but... Um, he probably did not know he was facing that way. Man. And after G-Extreme caught so well in that last game, this game three is looking significantly more one-sided. And once again, Sonic as a character is just, oh, that's the second time he's done that. These upbees on stage are being really effectively punished. Oh, yeah, I, that going for that down air, it's something you need, but the cost, the cost is going off stage like that. And you now have three stocks to one. Not only that, it's three stocks of a Sonic that you have to take out. You're gonna need to be maximizing punishes, and that includes probably getting some type of clutch early edge guard. I don't know if I see a way of winning past that, because look at this. Yeah, Kroninja, he's running away. He is being patient. He knows that he can take all the time in the world. He has so much leeway. Like the spacing and movement from Kroninja as well. Oh, but wow, he drifted down. After that forward air, but the up smash still catching him. Now only two stocks to one. This is still not a fun time, but he's trapped in the corner. If he can manage to convert it into some kind of edge guard, that'd be really big, but yeah, Furninja wants to just run down a little less than half the clock, but if he wants to stay, if he wants to really play patient, that's something you can just do. Instead, I mean, there's no reason for him to play that patient. He has the tools, and he gets the job done after two nail-biter games for one and two. Game three, a much more one-sided, and Kroninja's going to take it, moving on into winner's 